So you want to get into tabletop role playing games or more likely a friend of yours wants you to and they sent you this video because every time you dare to ask a question about a tabletop role playing game online, you get a million different answers, including the right and only way to enjoy these games. And for experienced role players watching this, be nice in the comments. Do not talk down to people who enjoy a different game than you or even if they just play differently. Role playing games are a very fun thing to talk about or even debate about, but they're such a silly thing to be mean to each other over. Uh, and when we overwhelm players with our own experiences and biases and all the things that we already know about ourselves and our preferences as players, we tend to scare them away, but we want new players. We need to welcome them and protect them and never ever let them go because they're one of us now. Now enjoy this two hour video or however long this ends up being. So what is a tabletop role playing game? Generally, it's a story that unfolds through a conversation between the players where situations in which the outcome is not obvious are resolved by rolling dice based on the rules of the particular game we're playing. These situations can be combat or trying to convince someone of something or doing some feat of physical strength, anything where it's interesting for us to see if it's successful or not and what happens in each case. I say this is generally what these games are because inevitably you will hear people talking about other ways that you can play these games or other things that these games can be. And all of that is perfectly valid, but most of the time and almost certainly with whatever your first game will be, this is how it works. Each player takes on the role of a character that makes sense for the setting of the game. Some games are fantasy games, sci-fi, there's a game for pretty much every genre you could possibly think of. Most games will have rules on how to play a, a certain type of characters, like wizards or fighters or cyborgs or whatever. In most games, one of the players will take on the role of the game master or GM. Some games will give this a different name, like a dungeon master in Dungeons and Dragons or keeper in Call of Cthulhu, but it means the same thing. This is the person in charge of presenting the situations the characters are in, narrating how the game world responds to the actions of the players and interpreting dice rolls and generally just moving the story along. Being the game master is often a lot more work. I find it incredibly rewarding for your first game. If you have the option to be a player first, I definitely recommend it. If not, if you want to play, but no one is willing to run the game, then do some research, watch some videos and take the plunge. Just remember the GM is also a player there to have fun. A GM can help make the game an entertaining and immersive experience, but the entertainment, fun, and safety of everyone around the table is everyone's responsibility. Tabletop role-playing games are magic. It's unlike any other hobby, but it's only when everyone around the table is engaged and invested in doing their part to make the experience fun that it truly comes to life. Most games will look something like this. The GM will present a situation. For example, you're on a moving carriage, the driver is dead, the horse is going crazy, and out the window you can see a hooded elven archer on horseback chasing you. Then the GM will ask probably the most important question in role-playing games, what do you want to do? then you say what your character will do or say. This will 100% feel weird the first time that you do it, and that's perfectly natural. You can play your character however you see fit. If it feels too weird, you know, to pretend to be your character and, and speak in the first person, like I stick my head out the window and yell, you'll never get me alive, and then I try to jump on the horse and get control of it, you can instead narrate it in the third person, like, I think my character will shout something out the window and then go try to take control of the horse. Then, and this will of course change depending on the game that you're playing, the GM will usually ask you to make a dice roll to see whether or not you're successful. Maybe you do it and you take control of the horse or maybe you fall and get trampled or the archer catches up with you. The dice roll that you make will usually have something to do with your character sheet, which is where all the information that represents your character lives. Just like in many video games, you'll usually find something in there that's relevant to the situation, like how quick and strong your character is or how likely it is that they can jump onto a wild horse running at high speed while being shot at with arrows. Different games will have very different rules for building these characters and exactly how and why and when you roll dice. So let's take a look at three different games that have very different dice mechanics to see how they would resolve situations like this. 
This is just to give you an example. If some of the terms that I'm about to say don't totally make sense yet, don't worry about it. Let's start with what will most likely be your first game, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. This game uses a 20-sided die or a d20, which you roll and add some modifiers to based on how good your character is at stuff. And you compare that result to a number called the difficulty class or DC, which is a number the game master decides on to represent how hard the task is. The higher the number, the harder the task is. So in our case, you want to jump from the carriage to the horse. This sounds like a physical thing that you're trying to do. In D&D and in many other games, you have a set list of skills and how good you are at those skills will be the modifier that you add to the D20 roll. So let's say, just for example, that you have a plus three in the athletics skill. Don't worry about how we calculate these numbers. We can get to that when we learn a specific game. So the GM asked you what you wanted to do. You said that you wanted to jump onto the horse and the GM might say, awesome, give me an athletics check. And let's say that the difficulty class for this one is a 15. So you need to meet or beat a 15 with your roll. And just as a reminder, in this case, your roll will be your D20 plus the modifier. So you roll your D20 and you add your plus three. If the total is 15 or above, awesome, you made it. If not, the GM tells you what happens. Some games will have very specific rules to, for what happens when you fail, and some games will just leave it up to the GM. Let's take a look at the same situation in a different game called Soulbound. Much of this is gonna be the same. What do you wanna do? I wanna jump onto the horse. Okay, let's roll some dice to see how you do. In Soulbound, you also have a skill called Athletics, but here, instead of rolling a d20, you put together what we call a dice pool. This game uses six-sided dice, or d6s. Other games might use something else. So here, instead of representing how good we are at athletics with a number that we add to the d20 result, we represent it with how many d6s we roll. The more dice you can roll, the better you are. And again, let's not worry about how we determine how many dice we can roll uh, for, for this specific check. Let's just say that we can roll five d6s. The equivalent of the difficulty class in this game is a little different. Here, the GM might say something like, give me a 4-1 athletics test, with four being the difficulty and one being the complexity. Basically, it means that out of the five dice that we're rolling, we need at least one of them to show a four or above. Maybe the GM will say that this is actually a 4-2 test, meaning that you need two of your dice to show four and above, because while this might not be physically that hard for your character, it is a bit more complicated because you're jumping onto the horse and you're also watching out for that archer that we said was chasing after you and the carriage is moving. So those two games were different takes on a very similar idea. You wanna do something, the GM decides how hard it is and you roll and then the GM interprets what happens and you know the usually that will produce the next situation that we wanna roll for. Let's take a look at a game that takes a very different approach. Some games focus less on the mechanics and give you fewer rules to how situations might be resolved so instead of telling you make this roll whenever you attempt an athletic feat, they might tell you make this roll when you do something scary. So you might find yourself doing the same roll for jumping onto a running horse and, you know, telling the queen that you failed her. An example of a game that does this is a game called Iron Sworn. Here we have much more abstracted concepts of what it is that your character can do. So, for example, in this game, instead of skills, we have uh, something called moves. And there's a move called face danger. And sometimes you would add something to that move if you're facing danger by running away, beating someone up, or, you know, anything else. And that number that we add, you guessed it, don't worry about it right now. So, jumping from carriage to horse while being shot at with arrows sounds like facing danger to me. And in Iron Sworn, we always roll three dice, a d6 and two d10s. The d6 represents you, and let's say that you get a plus two bonus for being a strong and mighty warrior. So we would roll a d6 and add two to the result. The d10s are sort of the equivalent of the difficulty class. In this game, if my d6 result is higher than both of those numbers on those d10s, I got a strong hit. I succeed and maybe I get some other bonuses. If my d6 roll is higher than just one of those d10s, I got a weak hit. 
meaning I'm partially successful. I did it, but maybe I also need to, to pay some sort of price. Maybe I jumped onto the horse, but I got an arrow in my leg. If my D6 is lower than both of my D10s, that's a miss and something bad happens. This concept of having a full success, partial success, and a miss is in a ton of games. Just like the concept of setting some variation of the difficulty class and trying to beat it is in a ton of games. This is a really good thing because after you play a couple of tabletop RPGs, it will become so much easier to learn new games. There are, of course, many, many other systems that do many other things, but these were just a few examples that I like that I think kind of show a little bit of the spectrum. Okay, now that we spent a bunch of time talking about dice, which is a lot of the game aspect of tabletop role-playing games, let's talk about role-playing. Like we said, you usually take on the role of a character in this world. If this is your first time, maybe there will be uh, pre-generated characters, or you'll just be asked to make one according to the game's rules. Like any other game from, you know, basketball to board games to tabletop role-playing games, the main thing that's going to determine if it's going to be fun is all the participants talking to each other and being on the same page on what is it that we're trying to get out of this. If you play basketball with your friends and one is there for just a casual fun game and the other is there for a hyper-competitive, hyper-aggressive game, both of those people are not gonna have a good time. When we sit down to play a tabletop RPG, if you're there for highly tactical combat simulation, but the GM is ready for a deeply narrative political story, you have to talk about it. Ask a few questions about the game, come into it with the right expectations, and try to think about what character would make sense for this world and for this story. And most importantly, what is a character that would want to do the thing that you're doing? If this is the first game that you're playing, my advice is not to try to do the, you know, reluctant hero who needs to be forced to go on an adventure. No, ask the people you're playing with, what are we? Are we spacefaring pirates looking for a lost artifact? Are we adventurers out to make their fortune? Are we a bunch of rabbits trying to run a farm? Whatever it is, lean into it. The game itself usually unfolds as a conversation. Role-playing at first will feel weird and unnatural, like we said earlier. You don't need to act out your character if you don't feel comfortable at first or at all. A piece of advice you'll sometimes get is to watch a few actual plays first, videos of people you know, playing games, and this can be a great idea if you're coming into it with the right mindset. Unlike board games, the flow of role-playing games can be very different depending on the players. Of course, that's also true to a certain extent for board games or any other game, but board games are far more structured and are more upfront about the experience of playing them. In a role-playing game, even a super rules-heavy one, you could still have an hour and a half of pure improv role-playing. Some actual plays are incredibly well-produced and professionally cast, and you probably know which ones I'm talking about, Critical Role and Dimension 20. I love both of these. I do think that Critical Role is great to watch to see how D&D is played or other games that they sometimes play. You just need to remember that these are all professional actors. I've Never experienced it myself, but I've heard horror stories about new players watching Critical Role and then expecting their DM to be Matt Mercer or DMs expecting their players to be Laura Bailey. But, you know, you can watch professional athletes play a sport. It probably won't look like that when you play that sport with your friends, but it can still be a ton of fun. Personally, my favorite actual play channel is the Glass Cannon Network. They're so good, so entertaining. They play lots of different games and I pretty much watch everything they put out. Another big question is what should be my first tabletop RPG and can I be the game master if I've never played? The game you should start with is the game you can play. If a friend of yours sent you this video because they wanna run a game for you, whatever game that is, that is your first game. Are there games out there that are easier to learn and have great resources for new players? Yes, absolutely. Are those games harder to find players for if you find yourself in a situation where your friends just want to play D&D 5th edition? Also, yes. Whatever your first game is, it needs to be the game for which you have a group of kind, welcoming people. That matters way more than the rule set that you're using. Can you GM before playing? Yes, that's what I did. I wanted to play D&D. My friends were on board, but none of them wanted to run it. So I watched a ton of videos on YouTube and I just started running it with a lot of disclaimers about it being my first game and be gentle with me and all of that. 
If you can be a player first, I recommend it. If not, don't let it stop you. Like any hobby, you're going to find people who are deeply, deeply attached to it to the point where it's a part of who they are. My love for this hobby is definitely a part of who I am, and that can be a good thing, but it can also lead to gatekeeping and people getting very worked up when you enjoy a game differently than they do. Not much to say other than these people exist in every hobby, please don't be one of them and try to avoid them. So I have no idea for how long I've been going on for, but however long it was, it feels like enough. I hope that this was a good kind of initial overview for you into the world of tabletop RPGs. I didn't go over one of the most important things. A lot of the questions that I get from new players is, how do you win? How do you win at a tabletop uh, role-playing game? And the answer is, you don't. It's more like a book or a movie where it's not about a win condition. It's more about telling an interesting and compelling story that uh, has some randomness built in through it through uh, dice rolls. But please put any question that you might have in the comments and recommendations and let's talk about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, go play a game.